All right, I'm ready to start. We're gonna start working on my Torah. We're gonna build two Torahs for a music video that I'm working on, and it's gonna be a surprise. I don't want you to hear the music until we get done with this project, but I want you to come along on the journey. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna build these Torahs because it's going to be a musical video of a song that my friend and I produced, and uh, it's gonna be in a theater, and we're gonna record this video in about two months. So I've gotta get all the props, all the props ready, I've gotta get the costumes ready, and I want you to come along on the journey with me. All right, we have four square wooden plaques. They're four inches by four inches. Next, we have four round plaques, five inches in diameter. And then we have four that are seven inches in diameter. Now, these are all three quarters of an inch thick. Then I bought myself some six wooden doll head beads and then six tiny wooden discs. I have here eight wooden candle holders or candlesticks. They're seven inches long. And then I have four three foot long two by two pine boards and some leftover pieces, don't know what I'll do with those. A thick roll of paper I found at the lumber store. Uh, also, I have a drill, some drill bits, wooden glue, and some screws, and that's about it. Now, the first thing I need to do is cut this uh, two by two, uh, the length of the paper. Okay, measure the paper side by side, 35 inches. Now grab a board and knock over a candle for good luck. Stand it up, measure the board 35 inches, and then close the measuring tape and throw it down like Chuck Norris, and saw as fast as you can like your life depends on it. You did it. Now grab another one, line it up with the first board and move the scrap. Make a mark and cut, cut. Oh, no wait, change of plans. Grab a third board and knock over three candlesticks for good luck. Line up the first and third board. Make a mark. Look for the mark on the second one. It's hard to find. There it is. Line up all three and mark the second one again. Now grab the fourth one. It's hiding. Pick up two candlesticks and drop them. Now, pick them up again, grab the third one and the fourth, knock it over for good luck, and now line up all four boards. Mark and toss the I told you to stand up. Now we cut, we cut, we cut, we cut, we saw, saw, we saw. Drop a board. Cut, cut, saw, cut, drop another board. Cut, 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 saw, throw down the saw like Chuck Norris. Keep going. Saw, saw saw and then throw down the saw again because this part is done all right now with my angle grinder i'm going to sand down the edges real quick make sure everything looks pretty straight all right so these are sanded down they look good and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find the center of these rings. So on the bottom side, I'm going to take a tape measure and find its widest point. Once I find its widest point, I'm going to draw a line straight across. And I'm going to do that this way as well. I'm going to turn it 90 degrees because I need to find the center. Once I find the center, I'm going to drill a hole in the center and then we're going to attach the wheel to the two inch dowel rod, like that. Now these are square dowel rods and you can buy round dowel rods, but I just wanted to let you know the round ones are going to be about five times the price of the square ones. <clears throat> As I said, I'm going to wrap the paper. I'm going to wrap this paper around the dowel rods and it will probably have some printing in Hebrew and uh, you're not going to be able to see the square dowel rods so don't don't waste your money on things that nobody's going to see. Another thing I want to do is I want to drill a hole in the center of the dowel rod and it doesn't matter that it's square because once we wrap the paper around the dowel rod nobody will know that it's square. So what I want to do is I want to take something straight, a straight edge, and draw a line from corner to corner, from corner to corner, and that'll be the center. So if you if you take a flat piece of wood or something you can line up corner to corner and as you can see you can get a straight line from corner to corner and that's how you find your center point. 
and that's where I drill my next drill bit or hole. And we are going to use glue to glue this, but I want to use one screw to give it a little more strength. What I'm doing now is I'm going to add a little glue to the dowel rod, the square dowel rod. You want to make sure you have glue on both sides, actually. And I'm screwing this right in here, right in the wood. When it starts popping out the other side, It'll be easy to line up the hole right there. Tighten it down. And as I said, you've got two items. You've got two things holding this in place. You've got the glue and you've got the screw. And it should look like that. Okay, and I'm going to do the rest. When I get done with all four of them, I'll be right back. Alright, as you can see, I've got one of these made. Looks like a little wheel for a car. Just let that sit here and let the glue dry. And that's a wood glue, so you want to get something that's uh, made for wood. And it's very strong once it's dry. It's a little stronger than Elmer's glue. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take these candlesticks and remove this sticker. And I might have to get a knife for that. Let me get a knife for that. Got a little screwdriver here, I mean a razor blade here. Just cut that off. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to pry off this little metal holder that holds the candle in place. I will do that as well. And then we will start uh, putting everything together. I've taken the metal parts off of these candle holders here, but they are quite difficult to pop out. Those metal, these metal pieces are very hard to pop out. And as you can see, you get a lot of little pieces. They're probably aluminum, but they have very sharp edges. So what you want to do is, you want to pry them out like this. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Let me do it like this, get a little closer get a little further away I guess. Pry this down so it looks like this. You want to pry it down. And then once you have a little opening what you want to do is you want to place the screwdriver all the way down. Kind of pry it down and try to lift it all up in one move. But as I said be careful these are very sharp. Now the reason you want to take the metal parts out of the screwdrivers or out of the uh, candlesticks is because what I'm doing is I'm gluing this to the end and it probably won't stick to the metal. So I want the wooden part, which is a wooden ball, I want it to stick to the wooden doll. I don't want it to be glued to this metal part and that's why I'm taking it out. Okay. Over here you can see I've already got one glued down, as you can see right here. I've already got one glued down. And what I'm doing is I'm just putting a heavy weight on top to keep the glue, or from keep it from moving while it's drying. I wanted to show you on this, if you look carefully, this is pretty square, but on the other side, it's not as square. You can see it's kind of slanted, but that's okay. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a Torah that was used 2,000 years ago. And they probably made everything by hand. They didn't have precision tools. And things get old and banged around. And uh, if it's not perfect, that's all right. Give it a little character. When you're drilling into a piece of wood, a very deep, you want to make a very deep hole, what you got to do is you got to keep pulling the drill bit up or out so that the sawdust can come out and get out of the way. Are these ready? And we're ready for ready to go for a drive in the car. 
look like they're wheels for a car, for a little kid's car. The next thing I'm going to add is this little disc, and this will be on top. And this will be here, on top of this. And as you can see, the paper will go inside of here. It will be wrapped around. Okay. The package of wooden balls have one little hole in the bottom, so the bottom is going to go, the bottom where the hole is, is going to go on the top of the candlestick, like this. And all you have to do is put a little glue right on the edge, right on the corner, I guess if you call it that. You let the ball sit on top of that, and you're done. You're done with that. Just let it sit and let it dry. That's all you got to do. Okay? The next step is to make, as you can see at the end of the table, this is what it's going to look like when it's finished. Of course, that's just the shape of everything. Um, this, is what the, this is what it's going to look like when it's finished. The paper is going to be in between. There's going to be one over here. This is just on top of this uh, to keep the glue from just so it'll dry correctly, then this will go on top. Let me move these out of the way. And these are just screws and nails and stuff. And that just helps hold everything in place while the glue is drying. Okay, now the next one I'm gonna make is gonna be a little simpler and it's gonna be square shaped. But, I, but at the end, I'm gonna put another one of these on the end like that. Okay, so it's gonna be a square shape. It's gonna be a little smaller. Looks almost like a sword. So by now it's a waiting game. As you can see, there's so many things that are just... I guess I just have to wait for everything to dry before I can move on to the next steps. And I'm debating on whether or not to, to use a stain or paint. Now this square piece, this square palette, is going to go on the end of the doll rod. So we have a different shape. And as I was saying earlier, the way to find the center of the square doll rod is you just take a flat edge and you just line it up corner to corner and you draw lines like that. So it'll be pretty simple to find the, the, the middle of this flat piece. We get a longer piece. This one's a little longer. You draw a line straight from corner to corner. And you do it two times, you make a little X, and that shows you where the center, that shows you where the center of the board is, so that when you drill a hole, it'll be right in the center. Pretty simple. Okay. And you just do that on both of these. Actually, I have four of them, and I've got to take that little sticker off too, because it's kind of shiny. Uh, I think if I don't take the sticker off, it's going to leave a little, uh, place where the glue won't stick very easily, even though the paper is sticking to the wood. Um, the paper sticks to the wood all right, you can see, but maybe some humidity might keep this, or will allow the, maybe some humidity will allow the paper to come off when you're doing a production, a show production, a theater production in the middle of the show. You don't want any mistakes in the middle of the show. 
So when you're drilling into your wood, you if you're using a screw that looks a little bit like this, it's got a um, kind of a trinal shape head to it. You want to make sure that you countersink. Uh, you want to make hole, the hole bigger here on the outside than it is on the inside, so that the screw can fit down inside of the wood. You put a little bit of you put a little bit of glue on both pieces. And that guarantees that they will be glued together. You take the screw and you start feeding it through the top piece and it will protrude maybe an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch. And you can put it right there in the hole. And then you can start screwing the top on. And then when you're done, you want to make sure that you wipe all the excess glue off. Now nobody's going to see the wooden doll, so you can just smear it on the wooden doll if you wanted to. Or your pants. <laughs> and then you give this time to dry. The bottle says it dries in about 20 minutes. Okay, as you can see, this is going to be the bottom of the Torah. And it has a large ball on the base and over here there's smaller balls. There's two in the package it came with two different sizes. So on the base I'm going to use uh, or on the bottom of the Torah I'm going to use a larger ball and when it dries I will figure out whether to paint it or whether to stain it. And I am basically just leaving all this heavy stuff on top just to press it down. Be careful that it doesn't wobble. You will notice that glue starts to ooze out between the two pieces. And you can take a wet, damp washcloth or paper towel and you can wipe that clean. Let me go get one real quick. You just wipe the edges with a little uh, damp cloth. Because if you don't wipe off the edges, even though nobody's probably going to see it, nobody will nobody's going to see the glue, the dried glue, but once you stain everything or paint everything, you're going to see a difference in color between the wood and the glue. So you do want to wipe off as much of the glue as you can. Let that sit, let that uh, dry a little bit. Now, I know most of you would probably look at this table in front of me and think to yourself, what a mess. I could never work like that. But this is how I've worked all my life. I mean, it's cluttered, but I know where everything is. So I don't mind. It doesn't bother me. All right. Now this is the second one. I showed you the first one earlier. And now we're on the second one. So it won't take long until we're totally finished with the two pieces that hold all of the t of the scriptures.